than his Mavs mentor, Dirk. Who should Patriots fans want under center, Cam Newton or Mac Jones? And is Jordan Love ready to prove he is Aaron Rodgers' heir apparent? Good morning. Welcome to First Things First. Joy Taylor alongside LeVar Arrington and Chris Broussard. Good morning, guys. We are filling in all week. Good to see you. LeVar, I think we can call this chapter two of the love story because we start in Los Angeles. Yesterday, Russell Westbrook was introduced as a Laker. The blockbuster trade on draft day brought Russ home to L.A. to form a big three with Braun and the Brow. And now Russ says the focus the focus shifts to one thing, a title. Let's take a listen. So real, I think it still hasn't kind of hit me yet that uh, being from L.A., growing up not too far from here, being able to um, watch the parades, uh, try to go to a missed school to try to go to them, um, being a Laker fan and uh, being from L.A., but now... Everything coming full circle for me is uh, it's a blessing. Each year I try to find ways, uh, like Rob mentioned, to be able to uh, uplift and make my teammates better around me. Um, and AD and Brian are, are friends of mine first. Uh, and me being their teammate, my job is to come in and uh, up- uplift them. And they do the same with me, vice versa. Um, and as the season prolongs, uh, we will figure it out. There will be ups, there will be downs, and that's, that's normal. That's okay. Um, but we will figure out. Uh, how to play the best way that we want to play to, to be able to win a championship. Chris, how do you see the Lakers' big three working together to win a title? Well, clearly they don't know. Uh, that was one of my biggest takeaways from yesterday is that they they haven't sat down and mapped out a game plan. All right, we all heard about and read about, you know, three, four weeks ago, The big three met at LeBron's house and talked it out. But from what I heard yesterday, it sounds like that was a brief conversation, that there wasn't much time spent on how we're going to make this work. It was like LeBron was like, yo, I'll play power forward. And AD was like, yo, I'll play center. Cool, let's do it. Like like that was it (laughs) because not Frank Vogel or Westbrook, neither of them had the strategy laid out. And you know what? That's fine. Because they still have plenty of time to work it out, obviously. The Lakers clearly took the approach of, let's get the talent. Let's go get championship talent, and then we'll figure the rest out. Okay? And that's a legitimate school of thought in the NBA. Go get the talent, even if it's not the perfect fit, and then you can work things out. That's certainly better than not having the championship-level talent at all. As far as how I see it working... Uh, I would like to see, and I've said it before, I'd like to see LeBron take the Magic Johnson approach and say, I'm going to be the full-time point guard, and I'm going to be the third, yes, third scoring option. Doesn't mean he'll be the third leading scorer, but that his mindset is let me get AD fed. Let me get Russ fed, and obviously the shooters around them, because LeBron will get his 20-plus points just by playing 30 minutes. I mean, that's how good he is. So I think it'd be better suited for that style and get Russ moving off the ball. I think he could be great. I think, though, that the way they'll do it is that LeBron and Russ will share the ball handling and playmaking duties. Basically like LeBron's done for most of his career with Kyrie, with Dwayne Wade at times, even last year with Dennis Schroeder. And when Russ is on the ball, I think LeBron will be at that elbow where he can get it and make plays from there or in the post. I'd like to see him in the post if he really wants to go down there because obviously he could beast people. So I think that's how they'll go. Uh, And then late in games, I think LeBron will be the primary ball handler and decision maker. And that could be tough late because the defenses, if Russ is on that wing at a three-point line, The defense is going to be back in the paint, daring him to shoot. They'll all but have signs out there saying, Russ, shoot the ball. All right, and he's going to have to resist that temptation and drive into the paint or at least into a mid-range jump shot. But that could clog the lane up not only for him, but for LeBron and AD as well. So that's something they're going to have to figure out. But I think even though I'd like to see LeBron full-time point, I think they're going to share the ball handling uh, duties. 
You know, Brew, I, I don't disagree with what you're saying. I think you went a little bit detailed into in terms of game planning and strategy. But I think just on the surface level of looking at these acquisitions that the Lakers have had this offseason, you got to believe that Russell is being brought in as the fire plug, as the energizer bunny, so to speak. He's going to he's going to create tempo. And I said this in shows prior to this um, with you as well. Um, they're going to ride Russ. They're going to ride him in the regular season. He is the shoulders that they're going to jump on and they're going to ride during the regular season. Russ has proven to be a phenomenal basketball player uh, and leader in the regular season. Not to say that he's not that guy in the postseason, but you have other guys that, you know, LeBron, and he'll be able to handle the leadership duties once once Russ pulls them into to the next chapter of the season. So when I look at what they're looking at Russell Westbrook for just on surface level, before you even get to the point of how exactly is it going to work schematically in terms of X's and O's, I think that they're looking at the energy factor, the energy energy source of what Russ brings to the table. It's also a toughness. I don't think that this Lakers team, if we're looking at this Lakers team this past year, who emerged as the guy that's like tough? Like who's the tough guy, right? right. We thought it might have been Harold, right? But it wasn't. Like he, he, he fizzled out and he disappeared. So that mentality of who's going to come in and who's going to be tough for this team who's going to have a chip on their shoulder who's going to push them along that's going to be russ i think russ is going to be the energy source for these guys while the older guys are able to ride that wave all the way up into the playoffs and see where it goes from there joy i agree with you on the energy during the regular season i think russ will be huge for them for that but i think that the championship hopes of the los angeles lakers rest solely on the very broad shoulders of anthony davis we can talk all we want about how Russell Westbrook is going to fit into this and how LeBron's going to come back in his 19th season, uh, not including all of the extra seasons that he has compiled in his playoff career. But this is on Anthony Davis. Like, if Anthony Davis isn't healthy, this is going to be a great story that we're going to talk a lot about because it's LeBron, Westbrook, and AD and the Lakers. But if he is not healthy in the postseason, thank you for coming, Los Angeles Laker fans. We will be watching the championship from home. That's just how it goes. Anthony Davis is the key to this. We saw what happened in the bubble when Anthony Davis was healthy. Now, the, the, the situation in the bubble was very unique in that they had those months off. So it's not like he was coming back from an injury. They were off and then came back fully healthy, him and LeBron. But to me, Anthony Davis is the key to all this. I think what how Russell Westbrook will fit in schematically uh, at the end of games, all of that will be sorted out through the season. It'll probably be bumpy in the beginning, as it generally is when you bring in new high caliber players. They're going to figure out the formula and the chemistry. They haven't played together. There's going to be some questions. Is it going to work? By the end of the season, they'll figure it out because LeBron James always finds a way to do that. And I also believe that Russell Westbrook will make an effort to adjust his game to fit into this team's chemistry and what they have going on. Similar to what Harden did in Brooklyn. None of us thought that we were going to see Harden in Brooklyn the way that we did during the regular season. He made a change and it worked. And had they all been healthy, we might be having a different conversation about the NBA entirely. But that's a different story. I think Westbrook has that capacity as well. But I'm not looking at Westbrook and I'm not looking at LeBron. I know what Westbrook brings from an energy level during the regular season, to LeVar's point. I know what LeBron's going to bring every single year. Anthony Davis is the question to me. Mm. No doubt, Joy. I mean, he, he, he not only has to be healthy, though, he has to return to the form that he displayed two years ago in the bubble. All right, Last year, he wasn't good. I mean, yeah, he was an all-star caliber player, but for his standards, I expected him to take that championship swagger and go to another level, make it his team, and be in the MVP conversation. That's the Anthony Davis that they need to return. He should be the leading scorer. He should be getting them like at least 26 points a game and 10 rebounds a game. If he's that Anthony Davis and he's healthy, then yes, the rest of the West and league period needs to be wary or leery of these Lakers. Now, I want to address this quickly, LeVar, what you said, because I agree wholeheartedly. LeBron, I, look, you look at when he's won his titles, he's had a dog with him. 
All right? D-Wade D was that dog, that guy that will just go get it when you need a bucket, right? Kyrie was that dog. And even in L.A., I would say in the bubble, even though he wasn't in his prime or a star anymore, Rajon Rondo is that dog. And last year, A.D. is great. He ain't that dog, though. And LeBron recognizes, I need a dog. And Westbrook is that guy. So I think that went a lot into his thinking of why he wanted Westbrook as well. Yeah, I think they were hoping that Schroeder, I, I'm sorry, Joy, I, no, I'm thinking ahead. they were hoping Schroeder would be that yep. guy, you know, but he turned out to not be that guy. And Magic Johnson made it very clear that he was not of the Lakers standard or caliber. So I think that that's what they were looking for in Schroeder to be that very thing that they're looking to get out of Russ, Joy. Yeah, they're definitely going to get that dog out of Russ for sure. So the NFL now, do Amari, City, and Gallup hold the crown as the most explosive receiving group in the league? We'll discuss that next. This is...